Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I am talking to you about, I think, a super important topic, probably something that everybody here has struggled with at one point or another um, as you're dealing with a narcissist, and that is the topic of trying to save the narcissist. Um, so I mentioned a few times on this channel already that most of my um, clients for sure are INFJs and specifically INFJT. And they are, these people are super empaths. So they fill all of the things. When they're in a different environment, they can immediately tell you what's going on in that environment. They can fill uh, what's happening there they can so they can tell what people's needs are they can tell where people's hurts are they can tell where people's um, joy lies all of that kind of stuff um, is available to them in the atmosphere that they that they step into or are in some way connected to because they don't actually have to be physically there in order to feel all of that I have a video specifically on how world events will will interact uh, or play out kind of with INFJTs. So they are likely to um, to fill some sort of um, reaction internally, emotionally, um, and even with their thoughts, cause them to do different things that they normally wouldn't do when um, there's a lot of chaotic world events happening. Um, so... All of that being said, I I want to um, preface this by saying it's not just INFJTs who will try to save a narcissist, but it is the most likely um, because INFJs are the most preyed upon um, personality type for narcissists because they're easy. Most of them are easy to emotionally manipulate. Um, this is because most INFJTs don't understand their gift. So they are kind of just going wherever they feel good or whatever they feel right in the moment doing. So unfortunately, um, a lot of this is perpetuated not just by the narcissist, but by the society that they live in in general. I can't tell you how many of my clients have attempted to go to um, counseling or therapy with the with the narcissist um, prior to uh, filing for divorce or for filing for uh, uh, custody or some kind of thing like this and what ends up happening is that the the counselor will oftentimes give the narcissist tools in order to be able to more effectively man manipulate the the victim in the situation who is often an INFJ so this happens because because INFJs are so easily manipulated because they most of them don't understand their gifting they will always fall victim to the love bombing um, stage of the relationship you know where the narcissist is overly um, affectionate overly um, uh, trying to win the the favor the love the affection whatever of their supply so much so that the INFJ will quickly forget about all of the chaos, torment, um, and and other things that have actually happened. Like these are true facts. These are things that the the victim of the situation has actually lived through. But they're prone to forget it because the the when they feel something, they feel it so intensely and completely that it's hard for them to feel all of the the things that are happening in the love bombing stage and remember also how terrible the narcissist was to them just a day prior and so the narcissist knows this and um, actually I was just speaking with a client of mine um, and she said actually the the therapist would say things that before she filed for divorce the they did go to therapy and the therapist would say things like well you're responsible for your emotions and nobody can make you feel uh, something that you don't want to fill, your control of your emotions, which is absolutely true, right? We are are absolutely responsible for how we feel, for our actions, uh, for all of that kind of stuff. However, 
Um, if you're if you're an INFJ and you haven't been taught about how to use your gift, your you feel so intently that the narcissist knows this can start name calling, trapping you in places, um, doing all sorts of abusive behaviors to you. And then when you react to those things, because you're so fed up in that moment with what is going on, the narcissist will then say to you, ah, see, you're doing, you're doing exactly what the therapist told you to not do, because I can't make you feel anything. I didn't do that. You're doing that. You're the one making yourself feel uh, you know, unwanted or unsafe or whatever. And that is, again, blatant manipulation. Um, however, if there isn't anybody on the side of the victim or the victim feels like there isn't anybody on their side, so they continue to see somebody in counseling and these types of uh, things are said to them over and over and over, it can really wear on them. And to the point where, again, I've talked about how INFJs create these double caves, right? And they go in there. Uh, and and it can be very difficult for them to recover from each one of these instances, right? And so these instances just keep piling up in their minds in these double caves where they've, they've thought about not only the instance, how the instance has made them feel, and every time they revisit an instance or how they felt about an instance, they add some more details in, in there. And this cave is getting filled up with all of this really toxic, negative stuff that needs to get cleaned out. So how, how INFJs often, um, again, without understanding their, this gifting, it can be very easy to think, I feel so intently about a person which is usually the case for INFJs, they feel very, very connected to the narcissist, very connected, so much so that they are overlooking all, all types of abuse that they're going through. And what they actually believe is that they can give the narcissist something that will help them become the person that they see during the love bombing phase. Um, I, I have a video where I've talked about decoding the narcissist lies before because a lot of people think about a lie as the opposite of a truth, right? So it's something that's completely false, completely made up, none of it true, but that's actually not how narcissists lie and the best liars don't lie that way. They include a little bit of truth, um, but there's misinformation or disinformation mixed in with that truth and that's exactly what a narcissist does. And so not all the time will the narcissist be acting. The narcissist could have a moment where there is genuine concern, love, affection, whatever, for a person in a situation. Not all narcissists are psychopaths and devoid of emotion or sociopaths who have antisocial personality disorder and void of emotion and actually truly connecting with somebody. Not all of them are that. So there can be moments where the narcissist truly has a genuine concern, a genuine connection with either the victim, um, the, the victim's children, the victim's family, whatever it is, right? And the, the INFJ sees that and again, extrapolates that one quick snippet of what has been um, shown to them, what has been demonstrated by the narcissist and says, aha, you know, I can, that, that thing does exist. They can feel true passion. They can feel true connection and love and whatever else. And so now the INFJ is going to make it their mission to try to get the narcissist to operate from that place all of the time. Um, this is, this is often the cycle that, that people who are in relationships with narcissists get into. They get into this very, um, uh, there is no way out of this cycle, by the way. The only way out of the cycle is to, is to is to end, stop participating in it and get in a different one. You're never going to make that cycle turn out any different. And I know that's really, really harsh and it can sound really, um, like I know a lot of people are just resistant to hearing that. Like they don't want to be told that there's absolutely nothing that they can do. <laughs> But the truth is that they you can't do that. You cannot save the narcissist. And you cannot pull a person out of a world that they have spent their whole lifetime creating. And oftentimes they've had help from somebody in their family, from uh, their friends. There's 
there's obviously people who are supporting the narcissist and the narcissist behaviors. And you need to recognize the fact that the narcissist has their own life already constructed. And you're not going to convince them to destroy that world and build a new one with you to become something completely different. You do not have that much power. I know it feels very intense, intense for INFJs um, that that this reality is entirely possible because they can feel that that is a possibility, but it's, it's just simply not reality. You can feel things that aren't real, right? We can feel afraid of something that we have no business being afraid of or not feeling that intently about it, right? This is why we have such things called phobias. It's a fear of something. And a lot of times that fear isn't warranted. The degree of the fear isn't warranted. And and sometimes even the fear at all isn't warranted at all. So we need to be aware that our emotions can lie to us, and especially for INFJs, you can't let your emotions dictate your uh, your actions in life. You cannot save the narcissist. The narcissist has created a world, and you're either going to conform to that world, or you're going to be miserable spending all of your time, your energy, your resources, trying to pull them away from their world and to create a world with you. I've talked about this before, but this is exactly why so many people who have been with with a narcissist in some way, shape, or form, not even romantically, it doesn't even need to be romantically, it can be um, a boss, it can be a parent, it can be a a sibling, they adapt traits of narcissists because they see, okay, they're doing this, and and even unconsciously start to... to start to conform to that type of behavior. So trying to pull somebody from their world and make them come into your world or try to build a new world with you, that's still manipulation because it's against the other person's will. And even if it's like, I know, but it's better for them. I know what's good for them. It's it's the thing that they were, you know, created to live. This is the right life for them. All of those things may be true, but they still get to decide for themselves what kind of life to live. You don't get to pull somebody and make them do what you want them to do just simply because you want them to do what you want them to do. Even if it's in the best interest of that person, that's still manipulation and it's still control and you're still using the exact same traits that the narcissist uses on you. So long story short here, you cannot save the narcissist because the narcissist doesn't want to be saved. You think the narcissist needs to be saved. You want to help the narcissist. You can see how these types of things are are uh, uh, prohibiting the narcissist from living the life they were created to, living their best life, whatever, all of the things, right? You can see that. And while you're not wrong, you're that those things are true, it's not up to you to decide how the narcissist lives their life. It isn't. Even if you're the parent of a narcissist and you want your child to change, you can't force them to do something that they aren't ready to do. You're trying to save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. You're going to continuously be spending time, money, energy, resources. Your whole thought life is going to be about how to save the narcissist when they have no interest in any of those things that you are spending your life's work on. It's The best thing that you can do is live a life that makes you happy, that makes you fulfilled, that brings you joy, that brings you purpose, because that's the best opportunity for the narcissist to see what genuine uh, living looks like. That's the best opportunity for the narcissist to see what it's like to live a genuine um, life filled with true connection. I know this can be very difficult for people to accept because it's like, yeah, but what if the narcissist never comes, you know, to my life? What if they never see my life? What if they cut off contact with me and I don't have contact with them anymore? How will they know that I'm doing this? None of those things are your responsibility. Your responsibility is to be in control of your emotions, your actions, and to be living your purpose. How somebody else sees you or interprets you doing those things is none of your concern. It truly isn't. And you're not going to attract somebody 
Again, this is a, a learned behavior from being around a narcissist. If you think that you need to be overly, if you think you need to put on a show, put on a facade for people so that they find you attractive or interesting or whatever the case may be, that's again a tactic of the narcissist. That's exactly what the narcissist does. That's what they think. And it's not going to work. Narcissists can spot people who are playing the same game as them even if it's coming from a different place. They can spot that, they're not attracted to that. They know the game better than you. I've talked about this before, you cannot, if you think you're gonna play the same game against a narcissist and win, you're wrong. They've been doing it for so long, They've, they are constantly learning their craft and perfecting their craft and ultimately, you don't think like a narcissist because you have so much empathy for others, you cannot think like a narcissist and so to think that you're going to outsmart the narcissist at being a narcissist is a ridiculous thought to have. And it would be ridiculous even more so to start acting on that thought and start constructing your life to somehow attract the narcissist into your world. You cannot save a narcissist that doesn't want to be saved. How will I know if the narcissist is ready to be saved? Because the narcissist will be the one asking for help by by themselves they won't be going to you they will be going to a professional they will be taking responsibility for their actions um, in a professional and official manner so you guys i hope that this video helps you um, i see so many people unfortunately wasting their time wasting their life um, on things that are never going to yield any kind of return because it's just it's a dead end road again that cycle is unto itself it just is going to continue d destruction 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 it takes you further away from your actual purpose your actual life that you were supposed to have and it creates this like suction of funneling more time more money more thoughts more resources into something that's never going to become anything at all so I hope this video has helped you understand about saving a narcissist. It's just not possible. The, the best thing for you to do is to live, again, your life. Because if the narcissist does eventually decide that they want to change, that they want to be reformed, they need to have a strong support system to come back to. People with boundaries, people with healthy behaviors in every area of their life, and they need to be able to have people around them who can show them that it is possible to leave a completely destructive cycle and create a new life, you know, from, from nothing. Because that would be the reality for the narcissist, is to leave such a life to create a new one. They would need to have people around them who can show them how to do that. And, and so I hope that all of you who are watching this, if this is your situation, if this is the case for you, that you will have enough um, strength and boldness and confidence to walk away from the situation and to do what is best for you in the long run, even if it's painful in the short term. Hey guys, again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and click on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel. <laughs>